The good news, total cost less than $160 million. The park areas, $40 million of that. The law courts, about $100 million, including a $10 million mistake. And a lounge for six or 700 civil servants, who knows the cost? But now is not the time to nag and carp and criticize about this people place, this Robson Square. It is absolutely gorgeous. It is beautiful to look upon. It has everything. Vast open spaces, beautifully terraced. I'm walking on a stramp. Great thing. It's a cross between a step and a ramp. And I'm coming into this gorgeous park. It really is a park, even though the park bit costs something like, covering all costs, $40 million. And as you know, Robson Square, the law courts next to it, Robson Square has been a political nightmare in British Columbia for the Lord knows how long. It hasn't been a smooth road for Robson Square, I'll tell you that. You gotta go back into the mid-60s when the city was gonna have a park here. Referendum, bought the place, sold it to the government. And WAC was a guy with a gleam in his eye about the tallest building in British Columbia. 55 stories, 55 million, that was to be it. And then, of course, it would have been an economic proposition. You can't say about this, this, that about this gorgeous place. It can't be an economic proposition. It's got to be just a, a jewel. No, not to be conny, but this has got to be the jewel. It's the only way you can justify the expenditure. But anyway, after uh, W.A.C. Bennett was defeated, Davy Barrett went the open checkbook business on this. Go ahead. The new law courts, the new Robson Square. Escalation, infla inflation caught the lot of them. And of course, panic set in. And it was about that time, or be 70, oh, with the new government, when Social Credit came in in 76, they were very close, I suspect, to shutting the whole operation down because of the fear of the costs. But instead, they called in the inestimable Dr. Gordon Shrum. And uh, Dr. Shrum, he's always been lucky in these kind of things, you know. He got some labor piece, he pushed ahead. And when the boys in Victoria wanted to cut out, for instance, the skating rink, and I suspect much of the park, Gordon probably said, look, we've been through this whole thing. We're almost there, let's go. And so it's finished, more or less as planned. And behind us, see the art gallery? That's something that's still got to be straightened out. The provincial government gave it to the city for a, a dollar. And now it's going to cost $11 million to redo it. But who knows? Far be it from me to say the money isn't there. pleasant stroll in Robson Square leading to the postage stamp lawn. Beautiful though it is, and it is beautiful. And this mound of earth. The bureaucrats are a little bit hesitant about giving specific breakdowns. There's been so much kerfuffle over costs of this particular project. But I can tell you something about the earth here. It was too heavy. Great structural problems, stress problems. So underneath this, we've got vast big, I suppose, blocks of styrofoam, which is much lighter than that to help fill up the space and make it work. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the first wine-o bottle in Robson Square. Kelowna Royal Red, or medium dry. I hope it's the last one. But I suspect security and the very atmosphere of this place will keep it a really a desirable people's place. The plants, obviously were carefully thought about, cost a lot of money. And uh, they're watered and fertilized on a computer basis. I'll never understand it, but the water and fertilizer comes out of these heads. Inside, they gotta do it by hand, but here it's all computerized. And we come up to our little postage stamp lawn with a beautiful cedar squares, 12 by 12, I think, maybe 14 by 14. And let's trust that as well as no wine bottles, we don't see any dogs in our little postage stamp lawn. Heading towards, just for a look at it, the law courts. Magnificent 
glass ceiling structure at the far end. Now, the law courts won't be open until September 1979. And that's partly because when the panic was on about the escalating prices, the plans were changed. They took a floor off the top. That cost $10 million and some considerable delay. And at the same time, it cut down the number of courts from 35 to 30. That was not acceptable. However, the five missing courts have been replaced in, on a lower level. So the 35 courts will still be here. That roof behind you, the old glass, uh, it's a solar roof which will store heat for use, you know, um, uh, during the night times, I suppose, or the day times as required. And underneath the glass roof, I am assured, will be a veritable hanging garden of Babylon. They tell me it's going to be one of the most beautiful hanging gardens anywhere at all. Uh, the Premier, by the way, has a suite up there, but typically Bill Bennett, he didn't choose the place right above the waterfalls. He's a wee bit to the back, kind of shy man, Bill Bennett, I suspect. Uh, although that'll be a suite up there for use by cabinet ministers when they're in town. But September 19, 1979 will be a big day for the legal profession here, I'll tell you that. There won't be a court running in British Columbia, and dignitaries and chief justices from all over the Western world will be here for the opening of 990 Hornby. That's going to be the number, 990, and the title is going to be The Law Courts. Five or six hundred government civil servants in this uh, magnificent edifice will have to be the happiest and most satisfied of all. This is their coffee break lounge. These trees still have to go into the big pots and the lights to illuminate the trees still have to be added. This area is not open to the public as such. This is the civil servants coffee break and rest uh, period area. Over here it's rather nice. The original plan was that the public coming through could see the civil servants quote at work. You know, rather nice. But something went wrong somewhere. Because in many of the areas, as I'll show you here, they've got these dull, unsightly screens which make the whole thing totally different. Private. Even the plants are hidden from the public by these screens. Oh, we know they've got a privacy, but you know. Shouldn't be any higher than there, there. You know, and that was the original plan. Somebody added 18 inches. Pity. Pity, because it's a people's place, and a people's government, and a people's civil servants. Morning. Morning. <laughs> I'll bet you never in a million years thought you'd see Webster to music, anything other than the bagpipes. We're going to take another look, though, at some particular aspects of Robson Square, you know, without the music, just so you'll be able to appreciate all the nuances. And uh, here's what I want to tell you about it. That's the overall view of it, and that, of course, is the 10 million mistake at the far end. That was where, in the panic over costs, they said, knock off a building knock off a floor. And uh, they had trouble with the courts, as you know. 
I said 35 courts earlier. In fact, there's going to be 39. There's the art gallery. Now, I've got things to say about that. One dollar belongs to the city. 11 million at least to fix it up, and probably 20 million. Do you know what that should be used for? I'll tell you. It should be used for the Unified Family Court. It should be used for the Court of Appeal. It should be a public cafeteria. Now we come to the lawns, the park areas. $40 million. Now, it's unfair of me to use that $40 million figure, because that includes not only the plants and the substructure and all the rest of it, but that's what would have been available for parks in the other part of the city, that amount of money. This, of course, cost a fortune, and good old Dr. Shrum, in fact, of course, uh, he didn't kill any of the elaborate plans, and it would have been a shame had he done so. Quarter million dollars of water circulating around. A civil servant going around picking out the debris. You must keep the system clean. The beautiful little wedding chapel behind the waterfall. And that all uh, is already doing 30 or 40 marriages a day. It is the place to get hitched in Vancouver. And skating, of course. It's really very nice. As I say, I'm in two minds about it. I think the whole thing was perhaps rushed and overdone in some ways, but it's beautiful. That's when you can see the civil servants. I think that Bennett should just get right down there and say, remove these uh, high partitions. Get the civil servants' heads in sight, at least. I'm sure they don't want to be stuck behind these particular barriers. I really don't think they want that at all. And it spoils the whole beauty of this. You ever seen me so enthusiastic about a place? Especially this place. Love that skylight. This is where I was wandering around a few minutes ago on the film. This is ludicrous. Civil Servants Lounge, and I love civil servants, but they've got to make that open to the public, that place, and the civil servants if they must. This is just a general view of the very spacious areas, and very nice it is too, I'm sure. When Grace McCarthy came in, though, she got a different architect and put colors in. Arthur Erickson, the, prin the principal architect, isn't very keen on colors, but Grace likes colors. And I'll tell you, no bargain basement furniture in this place whatsoever. Nothing in the way of bargain basements, I'll tell you that. Now, that's just the overall view again, and it does look rather good, I must say. Now, um, I think I've got to, what was VTR voiceover, engineering backup jacket, desk introduced, conditorat. And now I'm going to give you a little introduction to one of my favorite pieces. You're going to have uh, a little alcoholic refreshment with me in the charming delight, the conditori in Robson Square. How's business in Robson Square? And that's why I'm sitting here casually relaxed at the conditori. Is that right, Heinz Abel? That's correct, conditori. Conditori really means fancy European style tea room. Well, correct on fancy baking, the best in style, what you can put off on baking. What have you ordered for me? Well, this is a Mozart coffee. That's our own creation. This is a special blend of coffee with uh, Schwarzwälder Kirschwasser. It's a um, special blend of coffee mit Schwarzwälder Kirschwasser. You mean alcohol? You said it, Jack. Heinz, lips that touch liquor ne'er have touched mine. What does that cost me? Two ninety-five. It's a bargain. A bargain at two dollars and ninety-five cents. That's eh? correct. Now, seriously, what about some cakes? You asked for it. We got it. Back goes my sixteen pounds down the window. I will not touch them. Take them away. Take them away. But they're beautiful anyway. You have to try. We have some low-calorie stuff. So no. It's special for diet people. No, it says verboten. It's verboten. <laughs> Heinz, you've been here almost as long as I've been here. That's correct. And I want you one of the pioneers of Robson Square. How's business? Well, it comes along very nicely. A real little bit tough in the beginning, but I have a great confidence in this complex. I think it's unique in the world. It's a real people's place. As if we meet here people from all world of life. You see Supreme Court judges, the little office filing clerks, business people, lawyers, from people like you, of course. Big noises and little noises. You said it. But can you make a dollar here, really? Absolutely. But it's going to take time because, I mean, when I look at the overall cost of this place, we'll say, roughly speaking, give or take a million, $160 million. 
They can't charge you, successful or you may be, an economic rent based on the building cost. No, that's true. You see, this is not a shopping center. In a shopping center, we have uh, 60 or 70 stores, two mega apartment stores. You go to there, 200, 300 people. Now, this is a people's place. You got a skating ring, got a wonderful surrounding. Are there bands here every night yet? There's dancing. There not every band. night. Not every night. The opening is not there yet. That oh. is just the beginning. It's just a start from something I think is great. And how about administratively? Are you getting good service from them? Yes. There's a very good cooperation because you don't forget, this is four city blocks. You don't put that together in three months and say, here, let's Heinz, go. you and all the other guys down here, cheers. Best yeah. of luck. Thank you so much, yeah.